welcome to Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max broadcast number 127. Welcome all, we're getting very close to Christmas now. Uh, just to let you know ahead of time, next week's very most likely going to be a pre-record because I won't be in the office <laughs> next Wednesday, so it's almost certainly going to be a pre-record, but I'll try and create something a little juicy so you can tune in and look forward to it next Wednesday. As for this Wednesday, we are live, so you get the opportunity to ask some questions. If you were joining us live, just stick a question mark at the end of your sentence, and when we scroll through the live chat, I'll be able to find those question marks, find the questions quickly, and try and provide as many answers as I can um, in the broadcast. But we'll extend the Q&A into uh, a Discord chat, so we'll have 10 minutes on Discord as well, after this broadcast. So if you didn't get your answer, maybe you'll get an a second opportunity to get your answer there. So that's how we're going to play this. But before we get into the Q&A, I would like to talk a little bit about what's going on in the last seven days. Now, you're probably familiar with Game Guru Classic's most recent update. For the first time ever, we actually got to zero bug count, which was pretty cool. Only lasted 24 hours before new bugs started to be reported, which is absolutely fine. That's what the issues board is for. But since then, nothing substantially horrible has happened. So if you are a Game Guru Classic user, make sure you check out the latest update and you can carry on with your game making project. There was one thing that was corrected today. If you were using the, um, the download store items, or you are saving standalone executables, you may have noticed that you couldn't download your purchases uh, from the asset store and you couldn't save the standalone without a message popping up saying these medias aren't encrypted. Those two issues have been fixed today and the update has gone out. It went out in, uh, I think it was about 1 p.m., 2 p.m. So if you haven't updated recently, um, update again, because that was a slight omission on our part. I was so excited about getting to zero bug count. <laughs> we made a rather silly mistake and we put it out without encryption enabled. That's sorted out now, so I'll get you, go check that out if you're a Game Guru classic user. But the things I'd like to talk about today are in Game Guru uh, Max Lab. Okay, so I have some demo. It's a, it's a small one. If you remember the last, oh, count them, three broadcasts, they were all eye candy and really cool DLC. So the, the Wasteland uh, game theme and the most recent one, which was the Offworld Station, set in space, no less. All very cool visuals. And we ran out of booster packs <laughs> to present each broadcast. So I'm going to go tech. So I'm going to show you what we've been working on for the next lot of things for 2023. We've been talking about it on and off in the past, but now we're, st we're, um, we're, we're going through the code now in earnest to bring you role-playing game, RPG genre, and all of the mechanics that that suggests. And I want to show you our starting point. It's still early days, it's not finished, but that's the opportunity with these broadcasts, to show you something that's in progress. So you can check out the development, before we've polished it and made nice little pictures and um, got it into a format that will please the general public. If you're tuning into these broadcasts, you get to see it just a little earlier and a little uglier. <laughs> so let me go straight into um, the storyboard. This is just something that I've prepared for my own tests. And uh, I'm going to run this. Um, before I run it, what I want to talk about is... Um, in order to do RPG prop play, we had to expose quite a lot of flexibility for yourselves and for scripters who want to add functionality down the road. What we didn't want to do was hard code a lot of things. And so, because RPG is, is quite a lot about armor and how weapons affect the player and player stats, etc., etc., I know that ties you in the front end stuff. Um, we needed to sort of open it up so it's super easy for you to customise. And the um, the player health is a big component of that. If you have armour or you have a magic shield, that stops any potential damage getting to the health value of your player. And so what we've done, we've extracted all of the, in quotes, hard-coded health management and put them in scripts. So now the engine doesn't have final say in what the player's health is. Your script will. And I'll show you that a little bit later. But right now I'm just going to do an actual example. Um, 
as as I've said earlier, this is very much um, work in progress. So it's not the final visuals, it's not the final look, but you get to see where we are right now. So I'm going to run this test level. And already you'll see some very strange and unusual hoods down in the bottom right. I'll introduce that a little bit later, but it is relevant and you'll see why. And here we have this little pot, E to use. What you don't see is this isn't a, a health behaviour, this is an experimental armour behaviour. And you see the brown panel with the green star and the zero. If I select E, it increases that value from zero to 43. I'm calling that my armour. So I've now got 43 points of armour. And when I go up to this character in his range, I've kept his range pretty shallow, he's going to see me and start shooting me. And watch how the armour deflects a lot of the damage that he would otherwise deal me. And you'll see that with my health counter on the right, but also I stuck in a debug prompt so you can see how much damage actually got through. So let me just hey, see you. this. <coughs> so as you saw at the bottom, it said Irma protected you and you didn't get the full deal of damage. You actually got a subtraction on that damage based on the armor that you'd collected. This isn't a final behaviour by any means, but it gives you some idea of you would have an object like a, a bulletproof vest or some sort of magic thing, and then you set this behaviour to it, and then you can set the properties of exactly how much armour are you going to collect, la 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 la. Now this is the bit that's still very much, I would say, work in progress, which is the user variable name. Um, at the moment, this is the actual global name for the script. So you use this, and then you can actually affect a global value in the global script of the entire game level and that's what this is right now so just remember that g underscore user global super important when we go diving into the the lower script but that's that part of it normally when a character shoots the player um, it was all her coded to calculate the damage to deduct that from the player's health and then that's what you'd have but what we've decided to do which it kind of makes sense is allow you the user, the scripter, to intercept that instruction. So before you deal the final damage to the player, you get to play around with, with what that does. So I'm going to just show you that script briefly. I'm not expecting to know what scripting is, I just want to show you, uh, for those who have a general idea of what's going on, what's been happening. You may have been familiar with the global.lua and the game player control.lua, which was basically we did this years ago, we exposed all of the different logic for play control, cameras, third person, all this kind of stuff back in the classic days and this was available. No one really used it, it was only the, <laughs> and maybe like three people ever changed this. And so it's too much, There's too, it's too big a file and it's too scurrious so no one was touching it. So what we've done, we've pulled out all of the health, the player health related stuff and we've made a new full, uh, a, a file called GameplayerHealth.Lua and as you can see it's just for the health stuff so this is all new all this I'll show you what that is in a bit but this at the bottom was just pulled from the player control it's the part which says if the health is not optimal then it does heartbeat sound effects and then it makes um, red mist on the screen to show that you're suffering quite a lot of damage that was in this script here but we've moved it over to the dedicated health script so it cleans it all up and in the future we'll, we'll spit out even more functionality from this one so we have things like game player weapon, game player jetpack, game player whatever it happens to be, uh, global music management etc. So you've actually got lots of smaller scripts that you can modify just a bit that you want instead of trying to dive into this, this really huge one. So that's what we've done and it's all working, it's all integrated so now the game engine does not have final say, this script does. So when the level first starts, this is called to set up player health. You can set that health to the value anytime you want. You can add to the health and you can subtract from the health. And now before any of these requests are made, it goes through this and only when it's gone through all your script will it actually have a final value and then you spit that back out again. And this is the bit that I wanted to show you because remember when we're setting armor, well, we actually set a variable called g uh, underscore user global. And if this is actually defined, so you've got a like an armor, a bulletproof vest model with a behavior attached to it, 
and this value has a, um, you know, is greater than zero, then it actually reduces the potential damage affecting the player. Of course, you don't want that to be a negative, so you grind it down to zero if it's actually, um, you've mitigated all the damage. And then if you did have some sort of armor or shield, etc., and some damage was left, you saw that debug message um, protecting you, only such and such a damage got through, and then you let it carry on with its new damage value, which then deducts from the player. Um, this was actually hard coded, we've now put that in the script. Invulnerable, if you're in the storyboard and you click, uh, click play game uh, indestructible or something like that, this flag is automatically set up for you and we capture that and then can handle the player health, i.e. we don't allow you to mess with the player health if you're in an invulnerable state. And then that just sends information back to the game's engine to say, I have now decided on the final player health and that's what you get. And this is really just one example, and this is just one global variable. This isn't the final imp implementation, because instead of a single global variable, it's going to be a, a table. And it's going to be a table that's configurable through the storyboard, and that's the bit I'm going to show you next. Uh, so if I go back here, come out of this level, and go into here. Now, I don't know whether you've been exploring the latest version of... Uh, of the EXP build, and in fact even this is in the public build as well, we updated the um, storyboard to include in-game HUDs. So you could take the HUDs that you've had for years and move them about and change the font and change the text and the colours etc. And as you can see, I've been, it's not very good, this is very much programmer art, but it goes to show that you can actually change some things around. So I got rid of the weapon, there's no weapons, I'm just there to get hurt. <laughs> and then I changed the panel to red, I changed the icon, and then this one and this one represents health remaining, and this value would is maximum health, and that already exists. What I have added, if I click on this one, and then look at this drop down, I've added a new one here, custom user global. Again, that just relates to that single global that you saw, but eventually, from here, you'll be able to click add new, variable or add new user global, whatever it is, give it a name, and once it's got a name, it's now have a permanent place in your game project, and it will list out that anytime you're in a HUD or a screen, think of in the future when we're doing inventories and player progress screens and stuff like that, you'll want lots of different variables to control all the different things that you want to represent on this screen. And as you saw in the level, you can actually have behaviors that can tap into those variables. As you saw in the behavior, you had to tap it out manually, but that will be replaced with a drop-down. So the drop-down will have every single user global variable that you create here, and you can connect up your behaviors to your front-end HUD. So that's the solution that we've gone for. It's super adaptable, super customizable, zero hard coding. It's all basically you creating a screen and connecting a variable that you've created here with a behavior that you've associated with an object. and. For those who want to have full control of the player health, we expose the player, sorry, the game player health .lua. And the cool thing about this is, the reason I think a lot of people didn't mess with this one is it, it was all powerful. So if you changed it and then we did an update, it would erase your changes and then put it back to the way it was, you know, as, as we designed it. The good thing about this implementation is gameplayhealth.lua can now be placed in the writables folder in the script bank. So even though this is the root, this is the one that gets updated when we update GameGuru Max, you'll get updates, and we may add an improved functionality to this. If you've got your own version sitting in the uh, writables script bank folder, then you get to use yours, the one that you've been working on for your game projects. And so that way, if you just want to add may not be damage or uh, uh, armor, it might be shields or some sort of magical defense or something temporary, an object that you pick up and you're indestructible for 20 seconds or something like that. And you can use this, your own version of the script, to intercept any changes to the player's health and then do whatever you want with it. And we're not just, and because it's script, this is the cool part about not hard coding and then handing it over as a script to all you guys and girls. It means, not only can you mess with the values of these variables, you can do all kinds of things. You can hide objects, you can show images on the screen, you can play sounds, anything that you can do with the hundreds of Lua commands that we provided, you can do in a direct response to health being added or subtracted or arbitrarily set to some new value. And so that's the power of the system. Super, super, super flexible. And for those who don't really know what all this is, 
Um, I'll just show you a little example if I was to create the, uh, the, the weapon. So we've got a panel. So if you've collected a weapon, this panel will be visible. If there's no weapon being held, this disappears. Then you've got weapon held. So if you actually select a weapon, that weapon will have what's called a weapon style. And the weapon that's included as part of the whole weapon design has a little icon which represents what that weapon is. And you've also got, if I just go to the top, do, 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 ammo remaining, that's going to be a popular one. And say that's how much ammo um, you have left. And you can change the colour, you can change the size. You get the idea. So now for the first time, for years and years and years, you can now customise the hood of your game, uh, as, as, as you can see here. And this, the reason we're doing this first is it already exists. The weapon panel, the health panel, um, those are existing, we want to be able to customise them. But what we're doing at the same time, because we have really thought about it, and the bit that I have hinted at, and now I'll allude a little bit more information on, is the RPG. There is very little difference between what you see here in terms of displaying values for health and ammo and different states, and displaying things for RPG, like inventory, crafting, storekeepers, opening treasure chests, player skill trees and progression, and tech trees, all that kind of stuff um, basically begins and ends. Um, it begins here with designing the screen that you want, assigning values to something meaningful, and then adding objects in the level editor and assigning behaviours that connect to those values. I'm sure there's a lot of jiggery poker we're going to have to fill in a few gaps, but that's essentially it. And by doing it this way, and we're not going to leave you in the lurch, we are going to create some templates for all of the aforementioned, the inventories, the, the, the shop, store, screen. But what it means is once we've created the templates, we stand back. Because at that point, you can completely change all the graphics, complete, completely change all the logic. You're not hard coded into any corners, and you can create as little or as much as you want. And so you can build out a very sophisticated RPG mechanic, both at the front end and, of course, at the back end with the script logic. So that's what I wanted to show you in the main. Uh, as you can see, it's still a work in progress. There's a lot of programmer art floating around. And of course, once we've finished the weapons and the health stuff and armor, because the <laughs> a behavior was created to give you armor, but there was no commands for armor. So I think you're going to get armor <laughs> first. But then once that's done, then we're going to change um, tact and we're going to create an inventory screen around these mechanics as we expand them to control more variables. And uh, there'll be some hard -core stuff. I mean, you'll always want health remaining. That's really a hard value. And you can't really do without it. And there'll be other things like that. I'll call those core components. But then, of course, after that, then you get to add all your own um, values. And these would actually be per game project, not per level. So you don't have to keep doing this for every single level. Because if we come back out, you can see game storyboard, ignore the title, but you actually see it's the in-game code that's associated with your whole game, not just a particular level. So I hope uh, that gives you a little bit of insight into what we're working on in terms of customizable HUDs and the flexibility that we're going to introduce, but then how the inventory is going to be born from that mechanic. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting the first inventory screen created so you'll press the i key and it'll pop up this is the hood that's what you see all the time currently the plan is we're going to create another screen here for inventory another one here for uh, player skill maybe another one here for a treasure chest store crafting what have you so a number of additional screens set out very basically with the template so you can just switch them on and off but they're already kind of designing if you just want to keep moving things around maybe that's all you're interested in just doing that, oh, that's how I've got my own version of it, etc. Or you can delete all those components and do it all from scratch once you've learned how the templates work. So that's Game Guru Max Progress. Not much else to show uh, except that I might do a little. Uh, so if you tune in next Wednesday, you might see like a continuation of this demonstration as we switch off, we finish all the answers. Da -da -da -da. At some point before Wednesday, I need to do the pre-record, so I might just strike while the iron is hot, maybe do a deep dive into um, more about the scripting, how it's going to work, etc. But maybe this is a good opportunity if uh, you are joining us live and you want to see something specific. I'm not too fussed, I'm quite happy to talk about anything about Game Guru Max. So if you do have something that maybe we haven't covered 
and would be useful as a sort of a show and tell for next Wednesday, then please post it into the Q&A later in this broadcast or in Discord when we jump over to Discord for 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's dive straight into our Q&A session. Okay, so let's get to the chat window. It's here somewhere. I found it. Okay, okay, okay. So I am, uh, am I joined by any team members who might filter my questions? No. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Now let's check the time. I have been talking. Yeah, it's all right. 20 minutes in. I've not been waffling too much. Hopefully this is all juicy compressed content so far. I'll find some question marks and answer some questions and see how far we get before we dive into our Discord secondary Q&A. So hello, hello, hello. Great. Here's a question mark um, from Dadgood. You mentioned previously that the VR code is in GG Max already. It is. Any chance we can get a beta version with VR enabled to play around with over the holidays? Yeah, that's one of my objectives. It's actually... I wanted to get the RPG underway. That's the bigger component. It's the one that had all the question marks surrounding it. And I'm really happy that um, uh, that's been moved along now. So we have a general plan of how it's going to be how it's going to be massively customizable, and we're at that point now. So yeah, I'm planning a bit on Friday, just to resurrect the VR and make sure that it runs on at least my headsets, and then I'm going to put that out as a little tick box in the developer mode settings. Won't be on by default, don't scare people, but if you know what you're looking for, go to developer mode and just keep checking out the, um, the Steam updates, and you'll actually see that tick box, and then you'll get a little button, click the button, put your headset on, and run around. Uh, that's theoretical. You only got a, like, a bit of Friday to do all that in, uh, but please check that out Friday night or over the weekend, and you might get a nice surprise. But there's quite a lot of work to do between then and now. Uh, now and then. <laughs> Another question. Um, this is from Peck. Did you look that up, or did you actually know it? Sorry, I'm not in context there. Let's see if we can find a, uh, a full question with built-in context. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Here's a question. This is from Tanner Productions. Is there a timeline for adding assets and texture streaming for entities, not just the terrain? No, there's no timeline, as you've seen us hint at. We want to do RPG and VR. Those are the last two big legs of this tripod that we're making to call it version one. Um, I do want to see streaming, object texture streaming. I think it would allow for a much larger ter terrain so we can get rid of that barrier that you're currently hitting at some point. And probably a smaller memory footprint as well because you won't necessarily need all of that GPU memory filled up with every single texture of your level. Um, you probably do have like, small versions of those textures but only streaming the higher ones when you're standing next to it. Uh, but no, there's no timeline unfortunately. We want to kind of get all of the the main promised functionality in place and then the texture streaming we would put under the category of optimization because you already have object textures texture streaming just makes it more efficient and memory friendly and I assume and I hope more performant as well so we're gonna have to hold our breath for that one or maybe not okay and um, did did, did, did uh, I'm making GTA 7. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea to make it in um, the current version of Game Guru Max. We don't even have vehicles. Okay, looking for another question. Um, da, 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 da. My uh, live chat just gl glinched then, if that's even a word. Okay, here's a good question from uh, Blood Movement Interactive. Do you have any plans to improve the visual scripting system and make it more user friendly? And if so, when? There's n there is a sort of a plan. I'd like to improve it. It does kind of work now, but it's very much programmer art. So there isn't an actual date or a release date or a detailed roadmap, roadmap on the replacement of the visual scripting system. I do think there's a great opportunity there. It's, it's, it can be better. We, we've already demonstrated that with the storyboard, we can do it better in terms of the UI and moving things around and connecting things up. But I'm afraid everyone who is wanting to play around with the visual um, system has to live with the programmer art version. Uh, and if you don't know where that is, I know I digress, but let me just click on this, go into AI management, edit behaviors, select the object that you want to edit the behavior of. Um, characters are usually a favorite. And then just scroll to the right 
then scroll down and you'll see all the logic for all of the um, yeah for all of the scripts that have this kind of visual layout system laid out like a flowchart super easy to follow but we'll all agree not the the nicest UI layout it's very much just for uh, programmers who want to create logic visually um, so yeah there isn't any timeline on that unfortunately but there is an uh, aspiration to be able to do that another question um, Fearless We asks, what about damage types like armor that protects say, but yeah, I, I was hoping someone had asked this, but not so much lasers or vice versa. Well, you saw the script, didn't you, where you've got um, gameplay health dot subtract damage. So it's just a, 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 a value, the literal damage value, and you subtract. But wouldn't it be great if, and it is on the cards, that you can actually also specify what kind of damage is, who's dealing the damage and other attributions. That way you can do exactly what you have just suggested, which is armor that's really good against blunt force trauma, but no good against a projectile and vice versa. And then in exactly the same way as you saw with user uh, globals, having behaviors set up user definable variables that can have these different categories of damage that then get passed into your own custom version of game player health and then you can deal with as many attributes as you want as you see fit very very customizable however I know a lot of people will not want to be scripting just want us to do it and we'll use exactly the same system it's super customizable for everyone else but it also means it's super customizable for us and those few people who really really enjoy creating scripts and giving them to the community and uh, we're making sure that that's as easy and painless as possible but then when, even when you get that version, you can go in and make small additions yourself. Um, so that's the benefit of thinking a, um, a lot about it before we actually just plumb for it. But absolutely, I think that's going to be something that's been asked for a lot. And every game has it. So the best weapon for the best character, etc. Uh, that's how you build up complicated and sophisticated gameplay. That's fun. And so yeah, that's definitely on the cards and we're already thinking about it. And as you can see, just by passing in who shot you and what kind of damage it is, you can already control how that damage will affect the player based on any stats that the player happens to be in, or, or the enemy, or vice versa. You get the idea. Okay, another question following on from the first one from Fearless Week. Uh, what about damage types, resistance for enemies, robots take more damage, for electricity, and less... Yeah, see previous answer. All those kinds of things, any kind of damage dealt and what is the target and what does the target think of that damage all of those scenarios can now be handled in scripts couldn't do that before but you could but it was a bit messy no it's easier it's more described and there's a more formal approach to be able to have all these different weapon and, and, and damage types looking for the question mark going all the way down to another one from dad good how do we get access to the exp build there's a beta code um it's, it's, it's well circulated. Um, maybe we should get rid of that beta code, actually. It's, just, it's a bit of a maintenance hassle to keep having to dig it out and then paste it individually. If someone has the beta code in an email and you want to post it into live chat, that would be great. Um, if not, yeah, maybe I'll post it. In fact, what you can do, if someone can remind me, I can post it into the YouTube comments after this broadcast is uploaded to YouTube. That might be a, a good... So, yeah. If you're watching this as a recording, just scroll down the comments and you'll see, uh, it'll say beta code and then this code. Just enter that into Steam, into the beta tab, and a new build will appear called e Experimental. Select that as your main build and you get access to the version that's newer than the publicly available one. Here's a question from Peck. In terms of fonts, is there going to be a guide on importing your own fonts? Ugh. I think you could just drop the fonts, a uh, true type font, TTF font, into a particular folder and it should appear in the storyboard selection. That was always the plan and uh, we've started you off with some fonts. I'm pretty sure it scans the fonts folder and that'll grow as you add more TTF files. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but that was always the intention. You know, we wanted you to use your own fonts because you, we want your games to look unique to your ideas and your game design. And you don't want any of the fonts to look like all of the out of the box stuff that we provide in Game Guru Max. You want it to be completely original, your own images, your own 
models, your own sound effects, and your own fonts. Here's a question from Ciro. Are there plans for modern day DLCs? Um, not internally. Uh, TDC uh, not going to be in the business of creating lots and lots of DLC as we have done in the past. Um, the community can blow a bit hot and cold um, watching the development team working on DLC when they should be fixing bugs and adding features. So now that work is going to pre predominantly be done by third party artists and third party artists from the community. So maybe there is a modern day uh, booster pack in the works out there. I don't think, I'm trying to bit of a think if I've heard anything. I haven't heard anything about modern day. Some other booster packs in the works, but I don't think there's any modern day ones in the works. But please do socialize with the community and find out if uh, there is something in the works. And then let me know and then I can tell, t tell everyone about it in a future broadcast. Okay, looking for another question mark. Found one. This is from uh, H. Nesta. The arms on the new melee weapons don't match the old stock weapons. This looks incredibly amateur when using both in a game. Absolutely, yeah, don't use both in a game. Are there any plans to unify the arms or make them swappable? Yes, there is, but not in the way you might think. The old weapons are old. Those are the old, old. Those are the ones that we had at the time, and so those are the old. Since March, we've been developing the new weapon system, which detaches the arms from the weapons and detaches the kind of weapon. So melee and uh, projectile, two different kinds of things, but they can both slot into the same hands. So what we're going to do is just keep working on the new weapon system. So eventually, the entire thing is the new weapon system. And then once that in place, then you can go to the hands and change the skin. You can change the design of the hands, add animations. And of course, separately to that, put a new weapon in those hands, whether it be melee or projectile. And then at some point, my prediction is we get rid of the old, what we would call the bait weapons, where the hands and the, uh, the weapons are all one model. Because at some point, as you say, it's very hard to mix those two and you don't really want to be doing it if you want people to take your game seriously so eventually it will all be the new weapon system we're just currently because we're still in early access we're in that transition the old weapons certainly helped us get it out the door but it's the new weapon system that gives everyone that customizability that we're, we're chasing okay here's a question from german her how many years of game dev do you need to be a game guru um you mean a game guru user? <laughs> I, I, I don't think anyone wants to be a game guru. Uh, yeah, a game guru user, you don't need years, you don't need months, you probably don't need weeks. In fact, if you follow the tutorials, you can have uh, a player running around shooting enemies within about 10 minutes. So not very much experience at all. What I will say, though, is if you want to create a game and put it on Steam and be well thought of, you probably want to have a couple of years of experience, not necessarily programming, just knowing about level design and art and sounds and production values and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think it goes without saying, more years the better. But if you just wanted to make a really quick game and learn the ropes, you can do that extremely quickly with Game Guru. So another question, three question marks. This is from Bunky Frog Studios. Question: Will we be able to easily hide, reveal hood elements? For example, if the player starts with no weapon then no weapon hood, after picking up a weapon hood appears. Yeah, that's built into the, the system. It's actually quite smart. Could be better, but I think it's good to start with. See where it says ammo panel? And you see on this where it says readout, ammo panel. But it, it's, it's basically automated. If there is ammo to talk about, it shows the panel. You see there's no ammo number or anything like that. The panel, all the panel needs to know is whether it's hiding or showing. That's all it cares about. Should I show or not show? Well, this logic here, the readout logic, says if the ammo panel, because you know you've associated this arbitrary image with this ammo panel, and all you're basically saying is, if ammo panel is required, then show me. If it's not required, it'll automatically hide. So that's how we're currently dealing with all the stock stuff, the, the stuff we've got right now. We are going to go into uncharted waters when we do things like inventory and uh, maybe your player is a knight and you've got special icons you want to show to show various things. Not necessarily a number or a progress bar or anything like that, but you just want a graphic to show in certain situations and hide in other situations, but always connected to some value that can be controlled by script or some behavior. 
So that's how we're currently doing it. I think it's pretty elegant, certainly for the early stuff. And we'll come up with um, solutions to ch challenges we've not thought about yet. So that's how it currently works. Um, basically automatic so far. Um, which means you're not constantly thinking about, you know, setting up lots of code. You just drop something in, tell it what it is, and then the engine will take care of the rest most of the time. And then when you want to delve into your completely customizable screen, then we'll have another conversation. Okay, this is a question from Nomad Soul. Please, can you enable height maps for entities so we can have height maps on geometry? Height maps as in displacement maps, uh, parallax uh, occlusion, things of that ilk, I assume. that I think that's already an is issue reported on the issues board. So I think it's reported several times, actually. So that is um, marked as an enhancement. We're going to get RPG and VR finished first, get to version 1. And I think after that, we'll look at what we can do about moving back up to DirectX 12 to look at Lotus Wicked Engine. It goes without saying that Wicked Engine already supports height maps and a couple of different techniques as well. So we'll be using that. Uh, so that's when it'll happen. So I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until version 1 before you get to see any movement on the height maps. The only exception I would say is if some artists came along with a brilliant booster pack that they want to sell um, to the community and they insist on height maps to make the levels look awesome. You know, I've done it before with texture animation and texture atlasing. <laughs> you know, it's not impossible. It just means we'd have to write the height map thing for DX11 and then write it again for DX12. So it's sort of, I'd have to do the work twice. But if it makes the booster pack look really awesome, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be convinced. Okay, um, Keith C asks, still waiting for that. Make your game button, Lee, any ET on that. 2027. <laughs> Anyone is interested in history, go check out the 3D Game Maker, a product that we created many moons ago, had a big green button, which was Make Cool Game. We actually implemented that way back when in an early game making product. So it's called the 3D Game Maker. Go check it out. It's pretty cool. All right, looking for a question, Matt. I had to scroll down a little bit, but I found one from Squarepeg. Uh, on the topic of UI tool, will there be... Will we be able to use the UI tool for menus and such, or will it be only for HUDs? Yeah, I, I say HUDs because it's just that's what we had and we wanted to customise. It, it, it could be any screen. In fact, one screen that I've not mentioned yet is a map screen. So you can press the M key, the screen pops up, shows you a map of your world, and you can put your own icons in, and this is where you were, and this is your objective, and other markers of interest. It's whatever you want to do with the screen. In fact, if I just bounce back to this, look, I can just drag in that, and da, da, da. I can just keep adding stuff. You know, I can add in images, I can add in text, I can add in buttons, other interactive gadgety elements. This is what all this is about, just creating your own screens. We're going to set you up with some templates, but outside of that, just take one of the screens, delete all of the template that we provided, and lay out your own screen. If that screen needs lots of buttons and menus, etc., then do that. And in fact, I digress, but look, you can customize these menus as well. This is your, your main menu that you get when you first run the standalone, which you can customize. And as you can see, we've now got the ability to add new stuff. You couldn't do that a couple of weeks ago, now you can. So you get the idea. The storyboard isn't really just about, I'll regret that, messing that up. It isn't just about um, modi slight modifications to existing screens. The screen editor version 2 capabilities now lets you wholesale create your own screens and then cleverly connect them up to logic. Um, some logic will be sim simple and straightforward, practically automated. Other logic will require behaviours and the deepest level of logic would require you to get your hands dirty with a bit of Lua scripting. So I'm checking the clock. Wow, that's uh, 20 minutes of demo-y stuff and 19 minutes of live chat Q&A. So I think that's a pretty uh, good place to stop. I know there's more questions. Uh, there's a link to the Discord chat um, that you can follow. It's in the YouTube uh, description. Just click that. It will bounce you to Discord. If you're not a member, it's two minutes to register and then you can join in. I have noticed a lot of people don't follow us on to Discord. Quite happy just to chat here in the uh, broadcast, which is fine. Uh, but if you do have a burning question and it's like you came in a bit late and you and I didn't get to your question in time, you do have a second chance.
to ask that question and get a, an answer. Not necessarily a good answer, but an answer. So I hope you enjoyed this final live broadcast of 2022. There'll be a pre-record next Wednesday, just as a placeholder. Maybe something interesting, maybe something super boring, but it will be there. I like to make sure that every Wednesday of this year was filled with a broadcast of one description or another. And of course, the next real live broadcast will be uh, in 2023, the first Wednesday of 2023. So please do join me and the rest of my team uh, for that. So, as I said, we're on Discord for about 10 minutes after I switch the off button. Uh, so I invite anyone to uh, join in there and ask some more questions if you want to. So until, I would really say, next year in 2023, thanks very much for your kind attention. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.